couldn't there could just be a, a field a quantum field that didn't not exist never not existed so you don't need to ask why does it exist it's a necessarily existing object so i can say the quantum field created the universe therefore the quantum field is the explanation atheist youtuber tom jump is of the opinion that quantum fields are a better explanation than the existence of god tom needs to give an account for the existence of reality a reality that has no god in it abg anything but god so invariably must choose from the diverse options available to him and quantum field theory is good as any other in fact any hypothetical alternative theory and explanation of our world one that does not include god will always be better for tom in short, Tom has an array of various theories that he can invoke at any time in his musical chair choices of hypothetical explanations. Who needs a creator when we have quantum fields? Of course, Tom does not tell us that the quantum field theory is incontestably incomplete. Neither physicists nor mathematicians know exactly what makes a quantum field theory a quantum field theory. And there are many serious hard problems in this theory that have not been explained or answered. Neither does Tom tell us that behind the equations of quantum field lies a tremendous amount of speculative imagination. What's more, the fields cannot be the most fundamental thing in nature because we know something that is even more basic and fundamental than them. And that is the rules that these fields have to obey. And whatever these rules and laws are, they are more fundamental and require an explanation. In fact, there is no logical contradiction between the existence of God and the existence of quantum fields, and Tom does admit to this in the video. The laws and rules of quantum fields could have their origin a lawgiver, true, and quantum fields could be a direct manifestation of God's creative agency, true, and therefore quantum fields or any other model of interpretation does not negate the existence of God. Popular science writer Jim Baggett, in his new book, Farewell to Reality, asked whether all that we currently know about the universe is based upon science or fantasy. Now why is a popular scientist asking this provocative question? Well, the answer is, he's asking this question because he knows that the everyday man in the street is easily fooled by any pronouncement that comes out of the scientific community and from any particular scientific mouth. Baggett makes it clear that we have no idea what the fundamental nature of reality is. Baggett reminds us that there is no such thing as an authorized or official version of the scientific story of creation. Baggett, the scientist that exposes other scientists, tells us not to be fooled. No matter what you might have read in some recent popular science books, magazine articles or news features, and no matter how convincing this might have seemed at the time, be reassured that nobody can tell you what the fundamental nature of reality is. Nobody at all. As it stands, the very beginning of the universe, if this is indeed the right word, is beyond the reach of science for the foreseeable future and quite possibly for all time. Of course, this doesn't stop scientists from speculating, and there are many contemporary theories that provide various origin of the universe stories, and new ones are added every month, Baker tells us. For example, in some of these stories, the universe emerges from nothing in a quantum fluctuation. In others, the universe is simply one of a large number, possibly an infinite number, of expanded bubbles of space-time in a multiverse of possibilities. And in another, the Big Bang results from the collapse of the universe that went before, as the cosmic reset button is pressed once again in a cycle that has lasted for all eternity. The bottom line is, there is no empirical evidence for any of these different ideas. There are always going to be gaps and things we don't understand. And this is why scientists will continue to indulge in incredibly metaphysical storytelling. After all, Reality is a metaphysical concept and is beyond physics and therefore 
beyond science. German theoretical physicist Dr. Alexander Anzicker, who has degrees in both physics and law and a PhD in neuroscience, goes much further than Bagot and tells us that none of the fundamental questions that bothered the founding fathers of the physics of the early 20th century are solved today, not even remotely. In fact, none of the great riddles of physics that have persisted for a century have been solved or answered. Dr. Alexander also adds that the most important unsolved topics from the twilight era of quantum mechanics have been simply swept under the rug. In short, instead of actual answers, all we are given is endless fantasy, faith and all manner of metaphysical imaginative speculations. Truth be told, science very much picks and chooses which unobservables it emits into its theories. But there is never any rational explanation for why some are relied upon and others forbidden. Dr. Alexander tells us that the scientific community does not address a single fundamental problem in physics. For example, the standard model of particle physics has nothing to say about the contradictions of electrodynamics, nothing about masses, nothing about ratios of masses, nothing about lifetimes, nothing about the fine structure constant, nothing of the relation to gravity, nothing about the deeper reason of spin, nothing about radioactivity, and nothing on the nature of space, time and inertia. As far as Dr. Alexander is concerned, whatever pseudo problems physicists may tackle, a theory that says nothing about these fundamental issues is, well, crap. Now, Dr. Alexander goes on to say that fundamental physics cultivates fancy speculation without any data, any observation, and any experiment. Moreover, it postulates a litany of increasingly bizarre concepts hypothetical new particles, wormholes, cosmic strings, membranes, primordial black holes, eternal or chaotic inflation, warped space time, supersymmetry, extra dimensions, quantum phone, and multiverses, but does not answer any of the hard questions, nor does it get us remotely close to explaining what reality ultimately is. In closing, I would highly recommend that Mr. Jump take a more humble position.